Let's just unpack what baptism is. You know, a moment ago, a, a family friend asked me to, to uh, baptize their daughter. It was a privilege to jump on the pool. I can't do that very often because there's, I, I have to get ready for this. And so, uh, but I, I jumped in and, and, and had a chance to baptize her. And I just simply said to her, have you accepted Christ as your Lord and your Savior? She said, yeah. And I said, awesome. And so she's little. So I said, can you tell me when you did that? And she was quick. She was like, I was around five. I was like, okay. So you clearly have a memory of when? It was so cute. I loved it. It was, she clearly remembers exactly when she accepted Christ. And that's all I'm looking for. Just make sure that you know when you prayed that simple prayer to receive Christ. Jesus says, let the children come to me. And so as long as the child understands what they're doing and that they didn't get up to get baptized because mommy said get in the pool, that's not the right reason. And so, but baptism is not, by the way, what saves you. And I think that's a concern. A lot of people say, I got to get my kid baptized because I want to make sure they're going to go to heaven. But, but that's built on the wrong on the false construct, that actually baptism does not save you. So I have a wedding ring on my finger, and this wedding ring doesn't make me married. It's a symbol of my commitment to my wife that makes me married. And so in the same way, baptism is not what saves you. It's the symbol of what has already saved you, which is your faith in Christ. Does that make sense? And so that's why we get baptized. It's to celebrate that Christ has changed us from the inside out. So five reasons why I believe you should get baptized if you have not already. It says in Acts chapter 2, verse 41, it says this. Those who accepted this message were baptized, and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. Notice the order. They accepted the message, and they got baptized. Look at Acts eight thirteen. Simon himself believed and was baptized. Did you catch the order? Belief, then baptism. Not baptism, then belief. Belief, then baptism. Look at this other scripture here in Acts chapter 18. Many of the Corinthians who heard him believed and were baptized. What that means is that if you've been baptized as an infant, that would actually preclude your belief because you're, you're not old enough to understand what you're doing. And so actually, there's nothing wrong with it if you got baptized as an infant. I'm not trying to knock your heritage. I'm not making fun. I'm not making light of it. So please don't take this wrong. But that's not in the Bible. That's a church tradition. And so this is what I encourage you to do. In fact, maybe you have family members who came today to see you get baptized. They're a little had their feathers a little ruffled, like, wait a minute, I saw you get baptized in your infant, why are you doing this again? And this is what I would always tell your mom or your grandma or whoever it is that's a little bothered, thinking, hey, hey, whoa, 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 I already did this. You're, you're basically telling me I did it wrong. We're not saying you did it wrong at all. In fact, grandma, mom, we want to tell you something else. We want to say thank you for the faith you instilled in us. Then when we were old enough to embrace faith ourselves, we did. So thank you for the faith you gave us. And then after we received Christ, as the Bible talks about, we believe then we're getting baptized on our own volition. Does that make sense? So can we celebrate those family members who, who led us in our faith early on? We're grateful for you. So even if you got baptized as an infant, then you found Christ later, we encourage you to get baptized afterwards. It's called believer's baptism. After you believe personally, then you get baptized. So there's a lot of people that may get baptized. They've already been baptized as an infant, but that's, again, a church tradition not found in the Bible. It's a great thing, nothing wrong with it. But biblical baptism, what the Bible teaches is that after someone's personally received Christ to get baptized. Okay, pastor, my second question is this based upon that. What if my kid is little and for some reason they die? Where are they going to go? I can answer that for you. The Bible is very clear. Scholars believe this, and there's lots of scriptures that prove this, that your child has not reached what's called the age of accountability. So you don't need to rush to get them baptized. They're not old enough to understand who Christ is yet. But once they understand who Christ is, they can receive Christ on their own volition. But before that, if, some chi- if a child or an infant passes away too young to understand who Christ is yet, you're guaranteed they're in heaven already. Does that put you at ease a little bit? So now I want to encourage you parents, let your child come to that conclusion on their own that they need Christ. And once they do, help them find Christ. Once they accept Christ, you can say, now We want to teach you what baptism looks like. This is why we have a class, by the way, for kids. What's really cool about our our baptism class, parents come with them, and a lot of times the parents end up receiving Christ at the class too. Because a lot of the parents are like, I did not know that. I did not realize I needed to pray this simple prayer to receive Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. And so we teach them, and so oftentimes the parents and the child end up getting saved and then getting baptized too. So we encourage your kids, fifth grade and below, to go to a class. We're not trying to say, no, they can't baptize. We're trying to say, we want to make sure they know what they're doing. Because many of us as as adults, if we're honest, we didn't know what we were doing as kids. And then we later on got baptized again after we personally received Christ. So we want to make sure your kids get it. Does that make sense? So that's why we do it in that order. So I just, I just, yeah, it's good. So what does this mean? Number one, get baptized after you have become a Christian. Number two is that Christ wants us to follow his example and his command to be baptized. Number one, get baptized after you become a Christian. Number two, Christ wants us to follow his example and his command 
to be baptized. Look at Mark chapter 1. It says this, at that time, Jesus came from Nazareth and was baptized by John in the Jordan River. Sorry, I know I'm driving the people backstage crazy. I'm going really fast to the notes. So they're like, what do I put up next? So sorry. But this is really important. Jesus himself got baptized. So I think if it's good enough for him, it's good enough for us, is it not? And so I just want to encourage you that if he did it, then that means we should do it too. It says in Matthew 28, therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So when we baptize people, we always say, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now you don't hear that because you're going under the water. What you hear is, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's what you hear. (laughs) So anyways, but that's why we do it that way. We're simply following what the scripture actually says to do. So number two, Christ wants us to follow his example and his command to be baptized. Number three, don't put off getting baptized. This is a common one. People say, oh, I need to put off a couple years to make sure I'm good enough. What's that based on? We're not good enough. That's why Christ came. None of us are good enough. And so we, we already talked about that earlier in the gospel series. None of us are good enough. Last week you saw the illustration. You can be Tim Tebow good, and you're still not good enough to get to heaven on your own. You can be Mother Teresa good. You're still not good enough to get to heaven on your own. It's not based upon that. All have sinned, even if it's one sin. And that costs you the standard of God, which means heaven is perfection. You can't get in unless you're perfect. Now, if you're like me, I blew that plan a long time ago. So I need some grace to cover me. That's why you receive Christ to cover you, okay? And so in the same way you receive Christ by grace, you get baptized by grace. It's not because you're good enough. Does that make sense? So don't put it off thinking, well, let me clean my life up a little bit, and I'll get baptized. That's not how it works. And so you just, it's, it's about obedience. So you just go ahead and do it because delayed obedience is disobedience. You ever told your kid, hey, take out the garbage? And they say, oh, I will. Does that feel like obedience to you? No, you're like, I, I, I didn't say later. I didn't say I'm suggesting something in the next couple of weeks I'd like to get you to get to. No, I need you to get up right now and do what I ask, right? So the very first thing after we become a Christian, God says, is to get baptized. It's very clear in the Bible. There's lots of scripture on this. And so he's saying, hey, now you know me, obey me. And the first thing I need you to obey me in is to get baptized. Now, some of you are, are wondering, well, how fast does that need to be? Look at Acts chapter 2, verse 41. Those who accepted this message were baptized that day. And so at the end of this message, you may not know Christ now, but we're going to give you a chance at the end of the message to receive Christ. You may end up getting saved today and then walking over two minutes later and getting baptized. Great. As long as you get the order right. We're great with that. Accept Christ, then get baptized. This this is an example of someone who got got saved and the same day got baptized. Look at Acts chapter 8, 35. This is a great story. A guy named Philip. Uh, There's a guy. We don't know his name. He was a eunuch. That's all we know. What a horrible thing to know about a guy, but that's what we knew about him. And so I'll let you look it up on your own time. Acts chapter 8. It says, as they traveled along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, look at this water. Why shouldn't I be baptized? And he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. He says, hey, I, I believe what you're saying. And so should I get, there's some water. Should I get baptized? Like, hey, stop the chariot, right? Stop the Uber. We're going to get out. We're going to get baptized. Get back in. We're going to be wet. We don't care. See, it wasn't about convenience. Are you putting off a baptism because of convenience? Because everything's not perfect. Well, you know, my family's not here, and I don't have a camera, and I don't have a towel, and I don't have a change of clothes. We have all of that, so you're good. Just, just obey the Lord on the spot. First John 2, verse 3 says, We know that we have come to know him if we obey his commands. And this first command he gives us is get baptized after you receive Christ. Years ago, I was teaching this same type of message, not the exact same message, but close to it, on baptism. And at the time, we were a one-campus church, and, and so we decided we are going to do baptisms. Almost all of them at the time were, were at, at the beach, because it's really cool. We're in Corpus Christi, and you know our first campus was Corpus only, so I was like, hey, let's do it at the beach. So we'd all go out there. So, so we would, I talked on baptism, and I went out to eat with my family after uh, church, and I was going to then change clothes real quick and run out to the beach and baptize people. My son, Mason, at that time was around 9 or 10 years old. So we're sitting there, and he says, hey, Dad. I'm like, yep. He says, I'm going to get baptized today. And I was like, oh, that's awesome, Mason. I knew that he'd become a Christian earlier, and earlier that year. And I said, that's great. He said, well, we want to probably talk to your grandma, make sure she can be here. And this. he goes, no, 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 Dad. No, you just taught that as soon as you know you're supposed to get baptized, you should do it right then. And I was like, yeah, I mean, I did say that, Mason. But, you know, that means like within a reasonable. No, no, Dad. No, you said that day. My son, my 10-year-old son is now lecturing me. So he's preaching the sermon that I just preached back to him. He's like, no, you told him. So now we're like, oh, you got to be kidding me. So now Jessica's got her phone out. She's like, hey, Ann, call my mom. We probably need you to get down to the beach right now. And she's like, oh. So now I'm like, and she's calling my sister. Like, we need to, now we're rushing families as fast as we can to beat getting to the beach before Mason does because he is getting baptized today. I'm like, that train has left the station. He is committed to getting his son. He says, I'm following what you told me. The Bible says it. I was like, all right, Mason, I'm not, I'm not going to stop you. 
What a beautiful thing. That's part of his story. And what makes it so great is, yeah, it was a little inconvenient for our family. It was a little faster than we thought. But guess what? It was his decision. That's his authentic walk with Jesus. Isn't that beautiful? Shouldn't it be that way with your kids that when they say, I'm getting baptized, you're like, okay, let's do this. Because now it's your faith, not your parents' faith, not your grandmama's faith. It's your faith. And so that's when you decide to say, you know what? Now that I know this, I'm going to obey it. I'm going to do what God is saying to do. I'm going to get baptized. I'm going to not put it off. I'm going to do it right now. Let me ask you something right now. Those of you who are kind of blowing off this message, like, nah, I've already been baptized. I don't need to do this. Let's apply the baptism principle to you right now. What's the baptism principle? It's easy. Obey God in the now. That's the, that's the baptism principle. So maybe you've been putting off getting baptized. Maybe, maybe you've been saved for 25 years and you've never been baptized after you received Christ. Like maybe as an infant, but never afterwards. There's no expiration date with his obedience. So he, he doesn't say, well, you know, I, I told you this, but nah, it's been so long, don't worry about it. It doesn't say that in Scripture anywhere. In fact, when I taught this years ago, there was a pastor on our staff that came to me and said, I'm a little embarrassed by this. I've never been baptized. I said, are you willing to do that? Now he goes, yeah. He goes, I'm embarrassed. This is so ridiculous. He was really a little ashamed. I was like, you don't need to be ashamed. You're just getting this right. And because he shared his story publicly, there were hundreds of people in our church that were in the same spot that then they were followed. They moved, were moved by his obedience. They said, well, then I guess I don't need to be embarrassed either. So let me do it too. So maybe that's you today. If we can have a pastor on our staff say, wow, I'm a pastor and I've never been baptized. I want to get this right. Then can't you? So I want to encourage you, don't put this off. You may have been saved for 40 years. It's never too late to do the right thing. It's never too late to obey God. It's never too late to read a scripture and say, that's what it says. That's what I'm going to do. Let's do this. Let's obey God today. Let's not put it off another week, another month, another year. Let's obey God. Some people need to get baptized at the end of this message. We're going to give you a chance to do that. But I also want to challenge those of you who are already baptized. What other area of your life? Let's apply the baptism principle. That God, did God tell you to do something and you've been putting it off? Maybe you've been putting off getting in good health. And you know, every time you pray to the Lord, he says, you could fix a lot of your health issues yourself by what you put in your mouth. By walking around the block, a lot of the things you're going to the doctor complaining about, you can fix yourself. Maybe God's speaking to you. Maybe God, God's speaking to me on that one. Maybe God's speaking... To you right now about, you know, you've been putting off forgiving someone. You've been putting off tithing and you wonder why you're stuck financially. You're not tithing. What is it you've been putting off? Maybe you've been putting off serving. You come to church, everyone serves you while you're here, but are you serving anyone? Maybe you're just making it all about you. So you're really good at being a consumer here, but are you good, any good at being a contributor? I want to help move the church forward by giving and by serving and by praying and by bringing people. Maybe even putting off someone you know that would really love this church because you lit up when you came here. You thought it was one way. You get here, it's different than you were told. And you're like, wow, this is really great. Then bring someone else that maybe is a doubter. They come in and go, wow, I had no idea. And so bless them. What are you putting off that God told you to do years ago? It's time to do it. You see, God's the directives do not have an expiration date. When he tells you whether it was 10 years ago or 10 months ago or 10 minutes ago, it's time to obey God. It's the baptism principle, which is to obey God right now with what you know. And on the other side of your obedience is his blessing. Maybe God's holding back some blessings because he can't give them to you because you're not mature enough to handle them. You know what matures you? Obedience. So if you'll obey the Lord, he'll begin to bless you. So what is it that you're putting off? It's time to do it because you're delaying obedience and God's delaying blessing. But if you'll obey, he will follow through too. So I want to encourage you to obey the Lord. Do what God is telling you to do. Don't put off getting baptized and don't put off anything else God is telling you to do. Right now, I hope some of you have a pen in your hand or you pull your phone out on your notes and you write down what you're going to do, what you know you've been putting off. So right now, how many right now are being convicted by God? God is reminding you that I told you to do this. How many, anyone in here? Someone are like, yeah, God, the Lord told me to do this. It may be something very specific, not that I even mentioned, but the Holy Spirit's talking to you. And so I want to encourage you to do what he told you to do. Make that phone call, reach out to that person, start that side business. What is it that the Lord told you to do? Do it. Quit putting it off. Taking care of your health, getting your mind straight, going to see a counselor, talking to someone, starting your devotional. I don't know what it is for you, but I want to challenge you to obey God in the moment. Now, look at this next scripture, number four. It says this, 1 Corinthians 15, it says this, Christ died for our sins, was buried, and was raised on the third day. This is a symbol of baptism. Just a moment ago when I lowered that sweet little girl in, underwater, when I did that, guess what? I basically said, you're now buried with Christ and raised to walk in newness of life. Does that make sense? And so when we're baptized, when I was a little boy, and I was about her age and I got baptized, the preacher lowered me under the water and it was me dying to myself. And coming up is Jesus now going to live through me. That's the symbolism of it. 
And so is that symbol happening in your life? Are we being renewed into being a new person? That's what baptism symbolizes, which means that should be something that's happening in our daily life. It says this in Colossians 2. It says, when you were baptized, you were buried with Christ and you were raised up with him through your faith in God's power that was shown when he raised Christ from the dead. So we're buried with Christ and we're raised to new life in Christ as well in our baptism. Look at 2 Corinthians 5. It says this, when someone becomes a Christian, he becomes a brand new person inside. He is not the same anymore. A new life has begun. The Bible actually says we're being renewed every day. In fact, next week I'm going to talk about this. I'm extending the gospel series one more message, and I'm going to unpack what real discipleship looks like. How do we grow in our faith? Some of you are really bothered by the first week. I talked about you can get saved and go to heaven and having not really lived for God. I'm not suggesting we want you to do that. I'm simply suggesting there's a difference between being saved and discipleship. Next week we're going to unpack what does discipleship look like because it has everything to do with the gospel. And so we're going to unpack that. It's the last portion of the gospel. Don't miss next week's message. I promise you, those of you who want to go deep in the Lord, who want to be mature in your faith, you are going to love next week. It's all about that. How, to real, how do you really grow in Christ? I want to encourage you to be here next week for that. But it says we become a brand new person on the inside. Romans 6, 4 says, We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. Let me ask you something. What's new about you? You say you're a disciple and, oh, I've been walking with the Lord for 25 years. And why are you still grumpy? 25 years in to walk with the Lord and you have a, the newness of Christ, you have the mind of Christ. Why are you grumpy? Why are you difficult to work with? Why are you rude still? Why do you still have a problem with this or with this or with that? In other words, like, where are you growing? Because if we're the same person we were five years ago, we call that faithful. I call it stagnant. We're supposed to be better than we were five years ago. We're supposed to be more, gener more generous, not just, you know, well, I started tithing five years. I've been tithing ever since. That's it? You haven't graduated from the tithe yet to, to, to sacrifice above it yet? Because that's what God calls us to. Uh, you know, I serve, you know, by helping out 20 minutes a week. That 20 minutes a week and five years, I mean, okay, thanks for serving. I mean, I'm glad you crossed out that line, but have you increased your service at all? You know? I mean, the Bible's pretty clear. Love thy neighbor. How have you loved your neighbor? Do you even know your neighbor's name to love them? Have we walked across the street and said, this is a little embarrassing. I said, hi to you all the time. What is your name? And then write it down because you can forget it five minutes later like you did the last time, right? <laughs> write their name down so you can go out and say, hey, Jack, good to see you again. Hey, Juan, good to see you. So you can actually know their name. In other words, love, how can I love my neighbor? I don't even know their name. I'm just being honest. You know, we say we know discipleship, but are we different? How are we different than the world around us? The whole world's complaining and being grumpy and fighting and yelling at each other and they're nasty towards one another and they're backbiting and they're gossipy. Are we just like them or are we different? Are we gonna be like Christ? Are we being renewed? How are we different this year than we were two years ago? If you cannot see a marked difference in your life that's radical from five or two, three, four years ago than you are today, then you're not growing in Christ. You're simply living the same first year as a baby, not not feed the baby as a baby in Christ. As we were, in other words, and you're not 25 years old in the Lord. You're one year old in the Lord just playing that same year over and over again. It's time for us to grow up. Grow up in our faith. See, baptism means a lot more than just getting baptized, doesn't it? It means that I'm a new person. I'm a renewed person. Do you know your body, your cells in your body are renewing every day? Did you know that? This is why if you'll begin to work with that, your, your, your health can change rapidly because your, your cells are already renewing. If you work with them, it's incredible what you can do, Right? Your mind, those of you say, man, I'm just, I'm just unhealthy. Then start thinking healthy thoughts. Think on these things, the Bible says. You can renew your mind. You can eventually cut new trails in your mind where you don't just go down to negativity and go down fear road to where everything is scary and everything is fearful and you're super anxious and you're all nervous. You can actually change your thinking about what you put in front of you all the time, fill your mind with the things of God, and guess what? You look up in the six months, eight months from now, and you start to think with faith. Is someone getting something out of this? Because you're supposed to be a new person. God has a lot for you today. God wants to renew us. And so getting baptized just illustrates our new life in Christ. And so maybe you've been baptized. Congratulations, you got baptized. Are you any different? Let's let God renew us. Let's God, let God change our mindset. Change us from fear to faith, from anxiety to worship, right? From being scared to trusting the Lord. I want to encourage you to trust the Lord. If there's ever a year that we need to trust the Lord, I think this would be a good year, wouldn't it? Well, we got all kinds of things. The world seems like it's going to hell in a handbasket right now, does it not? But we can trust the Lord that God birthed us in a time such as this because he knew we could make a difference. That's why he birthed us right now. We are supposed to be in this mess, and you were supposed to be different in the middle of the mess than everyone else because we're his people. 
his people. Get baptized to illustrate your new life as a Christian. And number five, get baptized by immersion. By immersion. The Bible is very clear on this. Matthew 3 says this. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. Well, you go up out of the water, you got to be in the water. So there was no sprinkling going on here. If you were sprinkled when you were baptized, again, I'm not trying to make fun of that. I'm not knocking it. I'm not insulting your heritage. I'm simply saying it's not in the Bible. So the Bible is all about immersion, okay? And so it says in Acts chapter 8, it says, here's an example. Then Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, again, you see this clearly going in the water, coming out of the water, right? In fact, the word, the Greek word baptizo means to immerse or dip underwater. That means we want to dunk you in Jesus' name. Fully, like the whole thing, right? What does that represent? What's immersion represent? It means your whole life is immersed. You know, people say, language experts say, if you really want to learn language, don't just go to a class. Go live in that country for six months, right? Then you're like, I can't go to the bathroom unless I learn how to ask to go to the bathroom in this language, right? And since I don't want to pee on myself, I'm going to learn these words. You ever been there? You ever had that? You're like, I have to learn these words, right? So you've been in another country, you're like, I need to know these words, right? And so it's, I just want to, I know I just said pee in church. I'm sorry. I know that's probably wrong. I'm so sorry. Pray for your pastor. I'm only about half saved. Let's just be honest. Okay, so here's the truth. The truth is immersion means you are in the culture completely. That's how you learn the language, right? Christ says get baptized by immersion. Why? Because we're supposed to be fully in Christ, fully immersed in his love, fully immersed in his grace. If you're still carrying around shame and guilt, you're not immersed in his grace. You're supposed to be free of that stuff, fully immersed with a new mind, fully immersed with a new purpose and a new heart. If you're still dating like you used to date, that's not full immersion. You need to immerse your dating life in the ways of Christ. Otherwise, you'll keep getting the ways of the world, which is heartbreak, right? Messes. Why don't we immerse that part of our life, right? It's like the rich guy who went to get baptized. He pulled his wallet out and held it up out of the water while he was going under the water. Like, I don't want to. No, 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 no. Let's pull that hand down. Pull that hand. Like, your, your money too, right? That's why Jesus said it's harder for a rich man to go to heaven. What he was saying was, you're trusting your riches. He said, you got to baptize your finances, baptize your health, Baptize your attitudes, baptize your career, baptize your dating life. In other words, what area of your life did you try to hold up out of the water and say, no, God, I'm going to take on this part. I'll let you have every other area of my life. And God's like, no, all of you goes under. All of you is immersed in the things of God. So let's apply the baptism principle of immersion to your life right now. What area are you trying to hold out of the water? That God's saying, I also will change that. Because wherever you're holding out, God's also holding out his blessing. The very thing that you want in your life to happen, you're probably holding it back by not immersing yourself in the things of God and say, God, I trust you in that area too. And so I surrender all I am, all I have, all of me goes under the water. I die to myself in every area, every hope, dream, and fear. And I come up out of that water a new man, a new woman in Christ. I want to encourage you that God wants to renew your identity. And it begins with a baptism. And then God transforms us completely through that. He wants you to immerse in the things of God. So now we know clearly how to be baptized, why to be baptized. And I believe we now have a place where to be baptized. So I want to encourage you to do this right now. Would you bow your heads with me right now? Every head bowed, every eye closed as we pray. This is a different prayer. In just a moment, we're going to let those of you who have already received Christ to get baptized. But first prayer is this. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, you can receive him right now. We're going to pray a simple prayer, and you can receive Christ. No one looking around right now. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Those who are watching online, pray this prayer when you can receive Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. This is what saves you. It's your faith in Jesus. Pray this prayer with us right now. Just say, Dear Jesus, I realize I need you. I believe you died for my sin, and you were buried, and you rose again. I ask you to come into my heart. Save me. I repent of my sins. I put you in first place. Thank you, Jesus, for changing me from the inside out. With your head bowed and your eyes closed, if you just prayed that prayer, you can let us know right now by lifting your hand high. No one's looking around. If you just prayed that prayer to see Jesus, you're not alone. A thousand people have received Christ in the last six weeks here. So raise your hand high if you just gave your life to Christ. Hold your hand high. Just no one's looking around. Just hold your hand. Thank you. We see those hands. Thank you. Thank you. Praise God. Couples raising their hands together. Don't even know it. Praise God. Raise your hand. Hold your hand high. Praise God. Praise God. Wow. So many people giving their lives to Christ at all of our campuses right now. We see those hands right now at Rodfield, at Stone Oak, at Rockport. Praise God. Padre Island, we see those hands right now. Those of you who are online, you can put it in the chat right now. No one can see my hand, but it's raised. Just put hand raised right now in the chat. You're at churchunlimited.com right now. You can click on hand raised. Just let us know. 
Lift your hand high. Say, I just accepted Christ as my Lord and my Savior. I just received the gospel, the good news that Jesus died for me. I just received him. Praise God. Praise God. Hands going up all across our campuses. Praise God. God is moving powerfully. Praise God. Praise God. You can put your hands down. Now, in the spirit of prayer, if you know God is speaking to you, if you know God is talking directly to you that you've already accepted Christ, whether you just did a moment ago or whether you did it months ago or years ago, and you need to get baptized, you know God is speaking to you right now to obey the Lord and get baptized. I want you on the count of three to get up and go to the back of the auditorium right now. We have a change of clothes for you. We've got everything you need. We'll just get you baptized right now at the end of the service at all of our campuses. I'm praying also for those who are online. Some of you right now are going to get your phone, go get a family member or a friend and say, here's my phone. Start recording this. I'm filling up the bath water right now. I'm going to baptize myself in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. I hope you do film it and send it to us. We will post it this week. I would love to see that. Please do that. Obey God where you are. You can have church in your bathroom. Praise God. Let's obey God in this moment. So on the count of three, if you're going to get baptized, whether it's online or whether those you are at one of our campuses right now, one, because Jesus commands it. Two, because even he did it. And three, because obedience always changes your life. One, two, three. Get up right now and walk back right now at the auditorium you're at. Let's go. Get up right now and obey God right now in the moment. Praise God. You do it. Praise God. Let's go. Let's go. Give these people a hand right now. People are getting up at all of our campuses. They're obeying God in this moment. They're stepping out. Come on. Give them a hand right now. Look at that. Obeying God right here on the spot. You do it. It's never wrong to obey God. It's always the right time. Give these people a hand. I'm fired up, man. People are walking down everywhere. Look at that. And all of our campuses. Come on, cheer on your campus right now. People are getting baptized. This is what life change looks like right here. This is what it looks like. Praise God. Praise God. There's at least 40 people right there right now in the room I'm in. I can't imagine seeing the room you're in. People are going forward. They're obeying God. Couples getting baptized together. Families getting baptized. I've seen gangs get baptized. I kid you not. This whole group of gangs, they were covered in tats. I mean, they looked like they tripped and fell into a fishing tackle box. They had so many piercings. I'm in the pool. They jump in the pool with me. Yeah, they're cheering them on. Come on. Let's go. They're getting baptized right now in the moment. I love it. I love it. This whole gang, I'm in the pool with them. They get in. I go, what are you guys? They're like, we're in the gang. I said, what are you doing? They say, we're thugging for Jesus from now on. I said, I don't know what that means, but I love it. That's so cool. Let's baptize you. And so I want to encourage you, life change begins where you are right now in the moment. You're one choice away from changing your life. Today is your day. Today is the day to obey the Lord. There's still people getting up. Still people getting up. Look at that. Still people getting up and moving. You, it's not too late. Get up. Let's go. Obey God. Get up. You're either going to leave here being fulfilled because you obey God, or you're going to leave here with regret. Which one do you want today? Obey God in the moment. And by the way, as you saw every, pe every person just get up and walk over to obey God right now, where are you obeying God? Is God speaking to you about something to do today? Before your head hits the pillow, obey God. Before you go to sleep tonight, you obey God. The baptism principle applies to all of us today. Obey the Lord and what he has told you to do. Does anyone else have something to obey? I do personally. Anyone else have something you know God's telling you to do? Anyone else? Anyone else? Oh, look at that. Still get baptized right now. Where are you going to obey God? What's God telling you to do? You just obey the Lord. Drive home wet. Praise God. Getting baptized right now. Praise God. Father, I thank you, God, you're moving powerful. Thank you for this gospel series. Thank you for those who received Christ, who believed, and now we're getting baptized and being changed into the likeness of Christ. I pray, Lord, that we would apply that same principle. Renew us, God. Thank you, Lord, for next week as we're going to learn how to be renewed and changed and be true disciples of Christ. God, teach us what that looks like. We thank you for this gospel series, and we thank you for what you're doing right now in your church. In your name we pray. All God's people said.